Let's Ohana go. is the game. We can go ahead and jump in now, and we'll see that uh, game three is underway. These are, of course, replays. These, these guys played earlier today. Yeah, we didn't want to force Braddock to play at like 4 a.m. in Russia. That would have been a little nope. bit rude. We only do that to night end. <laughs> oh, right. Night end is in Korea right now, but. Oh, you're right. So it's like morning for him. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. Night end versus TT1 will be a live game. The rest of our games today are a replay cast. Night end TT1 is actually coming up next. A little PvP action. I'm loving that, man. Uh, even though I've had quite a bit of PvP lately, certainly not in my opinion is genius, but I enjoyed those games so much. If you haven't checked the VODs out yet from my last Sunday showdown between Naniwa and Genius, you should really check them out. Uh, because despite the uh, score might look a little bit one-sided, the games were not one-sided at all. And it really, really had some awesome moves, certainly on Ohana. Sick as four suits by Naniwa over here, trapping an entire army from Genius yeah. on this ramp. was so cool. Very exciting, fantastic games. Those are over at YouTube.com. Are they up on our YouTube? YouTube.com slash NA. No, I think they're only for subscribers. Only for subscribers. You're going to need that HT pass. You can get that at NASL.TV. Yeah, but those games were really, really worth checking out. And I don't say that because, well, of course, I do love PvP, but uh, I would have even loved them then if I played Zerg or Terran. I'm sure of that because I think those were fantastic mirror games. As a Zerg player, I can say that it was some of the best PvP I've seen. Genius really played exceptionally well. He played like a genius. He just yeah. He always seemed to have the thing that Naniwa didn't want him to have. That's something you kind of yeah. talk about a lot in PvP. Uh, you you like play a build and there's like maybe one thing you don't want to face. It seemed like Naniwa was always running into that. Uh, that's true, man. Braddock is of course our Russian Terran spawning on the right bottom side of Ohana, our favorite map of NESL season three so far. And he's gonna play against Kosu's Wangjin on the left top side of this map. You know, Ben, I've uh, really enjoyed this season so much so far. Uh, but I'm also looking forward to seeing some of the other maps because I love watching these guys. But I feel that some of the guys are just not too happy with uh, a few maps. So we see the same maps very, uh, very often over and over again. Everybody seems to be happy with Ohana though, which is of course a good thing. Uh, but I don't think it would hurt to put in, let's say, the o Ohana spin-off. Let's just spin it around like 90 degrees. Or maybe like 45. <laughs> you know Ohana is a community made map, made map yeah, right? That's an awesome map. Made by Iron Man SC. I think is his screen name. And Blizzard was very impressed. Yeah, as and rightfully so. It's proven to be just an excellent, exceptional map. It's, I've, I've really enjoyed every game we've casted on it. I don't think I've ever been bored by a game on Ohana. You know, you know uh, one time I was playing on Ohana and I got proxy two racks and it made me so mad. <laughs> you know, I actually think it's super cool that if you create a map and then before you know it, and you see people like using it in pro leagues and you see pro players like, yeah, that's a pretty good map. And you think like, wow, this is really cool, man. Like the pros like my map. But then it's even better when Blizzard takes on your map and puts it in a leather map and like and everybody in the whole world is going to play on your map. How cool is that? That must be so satisfying. Yeah, it's, it's got to be one of the best feelings ever. Like that guy's got to be so proud of his map. Yeah, and he should be because he made an awesome map. I wish Blizzard would do more of that. It'd be like, it's really cool, but this is like the only time it's ever happened. Yeah, I would love to see Kravaz in the leather map. Dude. Give up on Crevasse already. Never, man. Crevasse is coming back. It will make a comeback eventually. Have you ever even played a game on Crevasse? Yeah, I played a lot. I played against you on Crevasse, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> you just remember it? Uh, it sounds like something I would choose to forget. <laughs> Command Center is ready for Braddock, so his expand is going to be a little bit quicker than uh, Wang Xin. Of course, Braddock went for the no gas fast expand build here on Ohana, and Wang Xin is going for the standard one gate gas expand. Uh, Wang Xin tried to poke in, hoped that Braddock didn't have a bunk yet, but Braddock is safe. Of course, that's what a uh, Terran should always be because you never know what kind of variant of opening you are going to see from your Protoss player. So it makes sense to just get that bunker ASAP. Mm -hmm. I really hate it when uh, Terrans try to skip on that because it's just asking for trouble. Mm -hmm. And it's also asking for bad one-sided games because then if Stalkers keep pouring on pressure on the Terran, they're never going to be able to get a bunker up and it could already be end of the game. So don't be greedy, you all your Terran <laughs> players. More of the story. Uh, same a double gas follow up for Braddock as we can see. It looks like the players had a short pause in the game. Uh, Stim starting up. This time Hawkson has uh, Robo going down. So it will not be the fast blink like we saw on Shakur's Plateau. Changing it up. I guess playing a little bit more standard. One gate expand into Robo. Three gate Robo. Yeah, and then adding those uh, additional gates. Or actually you got the gates before the Robo. So this is the uh, safer variant. but. Yeah, everything makes sense so far. And I wonder how Wang Xin is going to take this ban. Since you described him as a two-based player, but he wasn't really able to display it yet because the second game he was just basically dying on the pressure. Mm -hmm. He did try to go up to three bases. Stalker almost dies. 
Uh, but now Braddock did reveal that Marauder already, but that's of course not a huge surprise. But sometimes you see Terrence sticking with the Marines just a little bit longer and really using all their gas to get Metafects out as soon as possible. Yeah, that's not what uh, Braddock has chosen to do here. Uh, just now finishing up that factory, he'll be getting the starport down just after that. Waxen goes ahead and drops the double forward, so he's going to want to be getting those upgrades out. Mm -hmm. So I think he's going to play a super economic game. Yeah. He's getting both assimilators as well in his natural. Uh, his first observer, that's right, right? Yeah, his first observer is almost out right now. I'm wondering if he's going to open double observer or if he's going to get an immortal right now because he saw one of those marauders, so maybe he's a little bit worried and he rather gets an immortal. And uh, Braddock will be getting those medevacs. Starts the reactor on the factory. Just wants to have that standard... Terran mid game that we're so familiar with will probably try to drop or at least pressure with the first two medevacs. Yep, engineering bay is up as well for Riddick. Where is the engineering bay, Ben? Am I blind? Oh, there we go. It's always behind the refinery and I never kind spot it. Chilling it's out away. back there. Plus one is more than halfway done, so it seems like Riddick is once more going to try to do something with his first two medevacs. And um, well, Stamen, I guess he's going to follow up with combat shield straight away after this. He lost his tech lab with combat shield on, uh, on Shakuras, yep. but yeah, it didn't bother him too much. Since he did still have a way better army. It's also a pretty fast upgrade, so if you're going to lose an upgrade, Combat Shields is the one to have picked off. 110 seconds versus the much longer, I think it's 180 seconds stem upgrade. 170. 170. Twilight Council being wiped in for Wang Xin. Wang Xin has really weird like openings in re <laughs> regards to like Twilight and then into Colossus or Colossus into... Uh, like he's doing everything the other way around, or yeah. at least from what I'm used to it. But maybe he's just going to completely skip the Colossus for this game and he's going to get really quick plus two and he's going to try to get charge. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Yep, he's been mixing up his play a little bit more than Braddock has. As this is basically an identical opening, uh, 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 basically mirroring what we saw on Shakur's plateau. So uh, <laughs> Braddock says, hey, it worked once, let's do it again. For the people who just tune in, Wang Xing is 2-4 in our season, has two wins, four losses, and Braddock, unfortunately for him, is 0-6. But if Braddock wins today, he's still going to pick up 150 bucks. So it's going to be nice for him uh, that at least all of his efforts in the NHL so far were not useless. Braddock is just poking around right now with those medevacs. Wang Xing has... It's a pretty scary timing, but Wang Xing is going to need to drop good force fields, and that's what he does. Expertly placed observer allows him to see all the movement of Braddock's army. I'm a little surprised that Braddock doesn't try to scan over his army. This is so common amongst mm -hmm. Terran players. Going to use the map control that he's gained by this little poke to take a third base. Yep, so very similar to what we saw on the previous maps. Wang Xin has a few pros more than Braddock. He's once more going to get those additional gates, but no Robo Bay. He's just going to get Blink. He has quite a few stalkers already in his main base. And this is always the phase of the game where you'll see inexperienced Protoss players being afraid and think they need all their units up to, up to their ramp. And then Terran is going to try to drop over here or just fly in one medevac, drag you out of position, and then steam in to try to pick up your Nexus. Uh, so this is it, this all looks so easy, but it's really not all that easy. But Wang Xin handled the situation well and he took absolutely zero damage from this potential pressure from Braddock. Braddock with a good scan right on top of the extra gateways. It's going to give him a good feel for what for what uh, Hwangsen is up to. Although he doesn't know about the double forge, he should probably have pieced it together by now. Now we're going to have a 2-2 Protoss here shortly with Blink and I'm sure Charge will follow. Yeah, Charge actually starting immediately after Blink finishes. And he's going to get Colossus as well, Ben. So uh, we might see two base action from Hwangsen. Like two base with 2-2 two, two upgrades. That has to be really scary for Braddock. Yeah, it would be tough as Braddock hasn't made any Vikings yet and he's already getting his Ghost Academy, maybe misreading mm -hmm. the situation a little bit. Uh, if Hwangsen were to push with 2-3 yeah. Colossi and uh, with no Vikings out, that would be really bad. Wangsin, I mean, Braddock did scout the robotics bay band, so he knows it's there, but maybe he didn't click on it while well, he's producing Vikings now, actually. So might still be in time. Wangsin, uh, did he scout this? No, he didn't. He scout this third base yet from Braddock. Seems like he doesn't mind too much. Yeah, almost identical to how Shakur's played out thus far. Braddock mm. still just controlling the center of the map while Hwangsen just continues to try to keep an eye out, make sure he doesn't lose anything unnecessarily as he continues to build up. 2-2 mm, two -two is almost ready. I would be surprised, Ben, if Hwangsen is going to try to expand right now. He does have 400 minerals, but doesn't have a probe in position. And, I d and with all the gates that he has, he has a lot of gates with the upgrades, with the Colossus. I really think he's just going to go for it. Maybe the moment he moves out, he is going to try to expand after all. But I still think he has to make something. Uh, he's going to have to make something happen. He yeah, has so two many two zealots as well. 2-2 two two charge, Colossi, Blink. Um, not that many stalkers. Only eight stalkers. 19 zealots. Couple of mortals. Uh, he is gonna expand once more. Once in place is so safe. It reminds me a little bit of how Knight and like to play. Just getting everything on two base and then expand once more. 
and then just rely on your army control. Yeah. But I don't feel like there's a whole lot that Braddock could do to really take advantage of this. I mean, if you were to overexpand, Ponkson still has a huge, terrifying army that could come and crush it. No, but I think he's already taking advantage of it, Ben. Braddock is up right now. Uh, army supplies are about even, but Braddock has a few more workers than Wangzin, which is weird. Wa uh, Braddock is already mining from three bases. He's getting Vikings. He's, uh, Vikings, he's getting Ghost. Uh, his upgrades, of course, are going to be a little bit later, but there's really not all that much he can do about this. But I still feel A he's gonna be able to max out before Wang's in and B he's gonna get he's gonna be able to both get a lot of ghosts and a lot of Vikings. And that's normally the problem for Terran, that you can't really afford that against the Protoss who had uh, even or even better economy than you had. Braddock is out on the map once again, just making sure to deny control of these towers. And uh, he's gonna do just that. Zealot getting picked off. Wangson going ahead and posturing his army outside of that third base, wants to make sure that it goes up. Yeah, Wangsin has so many zealots, this is very scary, certainly on a map like this on Ohana, which really has a lot of open space over here, so if they would fight there anyway, those zealots are just able to swarm the Terran army, and Braddock's gonna have to micro really, really well. 2-2 two -two is not ready yet for Braddock. Oh, but uh, Wangsin wants to take a fight, blinking and charging in with all of his zealots, and Wangsin actually decides that he wants to disengage from that, can't really fight it. 185 supply for Braddock against the 180 of Wangson. A little bit disappointed by small things over here from Wangson's play ban. I mean, he's doing uh, he's doing a lot of stuff right, but on the moment that you know that this third base is going to be up and running, you want to take both assimilators already, because right now all that he really needs is gas. You want to be able to drop the Twilight Con, so you definitely want to be able to get some Archons. And right now it just costs another 30 seconds, but by the time it's, uh, he really started that, it's basically 60 seconds delay of when he could have had those assimilators and when he's actually going to have them. And that's a really big difference because this could be the difference between a couple of High Templars and we all know what one or two storms can do to the outcome of a fight. Great job by Braddock keeping his army in a position to deny these harassing uh, zealots, but Wonkson still kind of dominating the middle of the map, inching forward as he secures this third base and begins to finally mine there. Mm, he's going to have 3-3 uh, upgrades as well. It's going to be a really sick Protoss army. Braddock, I mean, Wonkson plays a super, super safe Protoss style. Um, which reminds me a little bit of the old Hazuops. I think Hazuops right now, in like these days, plays a more advanced style of this and definitely tries to play a bit more greedy. But this is super, super old, old style. You just get a lot of Colossus, you get a very strong army, and then you just sit back and you let the Terran player outmine you, but you'll be okay with it, because as long as you can get the army that you really want and all the upgrades and the infrastructure, uh, infrastructure in the most safe way possible, you're okay with that, and that seems to be the case. Yeah, and uh, he's got he's managed to muster a very, very scary force, Kev. He's at 3-3 yeah. already. Braddock's 3-3 three three is still quite a long ways off. Getting the uh, uh, weapons attack upgrade for his Vikings and the cloaking for his ghosts. But uh, Not the I most action-packed so game so far, man. <laughs> yeah, not the most action-packed series. It's just like, all right, well, chill I out. I think the first game was awesome. First well. game was incredible, but it still had this big lull in the mid-game where both guys were like, okay. Let's not fight. No rush 20. Mutual agreement, Ben. If only we would all do that, StarCraft 2 would be a very friendly place. <laughs> we see right now everything is going down for Braddock, as you pointed out, Ben. That also important personal cloaking. I think he has plus one already for the Vikings. Man, plus one is pretty quick on the Vikings. Plus two takes quite a while. Couple of Marines here are going to be able to stim in, Ben. And Wangsen can only wipe in one Zealot. This can actually hurt. Come on, stim, uh, Braddock. He's trying to find that perfect position. Guardian Shield goes down, and Wangsen's going to have... An okay angle to engage from Colossi immediately. Wow, beautiful EMP. Like right in the middle of the army. Look at that. What a massive yeah, EMP. They got tons of shield. And uh, actually, Wongsin's going to go ahead and back up, perhaps because of that. Doesn't mm, want to uh, join I think the fight without Storm, man, Wongsin is going to need a perfect engagement to actually be able to win this. I think he lost his only observer there. He did back up, and now he's got that big offensive blink. The Zealots charging in, soaking up a ton of damage, but they die pretty quickly. The Colossi. Not standing up to these Vikings at all, and Braddock's looking pretty good on the ground, Kev. Braddock is looking very good right now. He's going to stim in once more. We still have quite a few gateway units, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The moment these zealots die, these stalkers are just going to be useless. Uh, a lot of stims over there from Braddock, but he has the Manifex to back it off. Storm is still not ready, and I think the Protoss is in a lot of trouble. Uh, great control by Braddock. He's going to charge forward. Wonkson trying to get some Archons out, but I don't know if they're going to be allowed to finish. Look how fast these stalkers die to this bio. This might be it. I think it actually is Wonkson. 
up against the ropes. The Archon's finishing, but it's just too much damage output in this Terran army. Yeah, and the Archons were in a horrible position there as well. And, and look at the production tab. Look at the timing of Storm. And what did I say regarding those assimilators? If you would have only had everything a little bit quicker, if you would have right now, instead of those five Archons, we didn't deal a single, a single bit of damage, a couple of Storms to fall back on, I think it would have been a different outcome. Maybe he holds here. Maybe he's able to make it later into yeah. the game, and maybe he's able to turn this into a win. But as it stands... Braddock just going to crush Huangson in this in-game engagement. GG, Braddock takes it 2-1, to one, his first win this season in the mm -hmm. North American Star League. That's 150 bucks for the Russian. Yeah, that means that uh, Huangson right now has two wins and five losses in the season. And as you said, man, Braddock picks up his first win. So congratulations to our Russian Terran player. I think that's nice, man. He's good enough to... Uh, maybe that's a good sign for Jinro as well. Because, uh, I mean, both of them are mm -hmm. awesome, excellent European Terrans. But we're both of them were 06. So maybe we'll see Jinro winning later this week as well. Yeah, Not sure I, who I, plays. Uh, I can only hope so. So we'll have to wait and see. Great gameplay there from both those guys. Braddock, hats off to you, sir. That last one brought to you by Kingston HyperX. Yeah. The Kingston game to remember. Well, I think Braddock played pr uh, pretty damn well in that final game. There wasn't all that much he could have done uh, to put serious pressure on uh, Wongsin because Wongsin, wow, my mouth is so dry because it's actually getting really warm here in the studio. So every time I'm talking, <laughs> I'm like, I'm stuck. Uh, but what I want to say is that when you play against a Protoss who plays that safe and like gets everything on two base, it's very hard to take advantage of that. And the only thing you can really do is just get everything that you want to get in yourself. You get a better economy, so you get the coast, you get the nice upgrades on the Vikings. And I think that's exactly what yeah. Braddock did. And I just think that Wong Sin played a too safe of a Protoss style. And then like trying to attack with 200 supply but not having storms, uh, that's going to be very tough. Yeah. Uh, tough, uh, tough hustle indeed.